Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Antonio. I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat, where I work for the containers team, uh, where I also maintain the Cryo project. Probably you've heard about it. Um, and I'm also maintaining other container-related uh, tools within Red Hat. Today, we're going to talk about Cryo, uh, which is a container runtime for Kubernetes. Um, we'll go through uh, why Kubernetes introduced uh, a new API called the CRI, um, what were the issue uh, it was facing, uh, how it solved it with the CRI, and uh, how we've built Cryo from little tools and libraries we've been building uh, over the past few years, I guess. So um, I'll briefly talk about some of the container tools we've built uh, as part of, uh, of the whole Cryo project, especially the Project Atomic project, but this will be at the end. So roughly four years ago, uh, the only supported runtime in Kube was just Docker. And that means that at the time, the interaction between the kubelet and the container runtime was in was built into the kubelet itself, like in the code base of the kubelet. There was uh, there was a sort of maintenance burden in doing that because every new feature being added to to kube required uh, the maintainers to actually change also the interaction between the kubelet and Docker itself. Uh, then Rocket came, uh, and again the interaction was wired into the kubelet itself. So uh, the Kubernetes maintainer th uh, thought that if another runtime uh, would come, then that requires another uh, built-in uh, interaction in the kubelet. That wasn't really scalable. Uh, and on top of that, Docker, uh, the runtime, was actually breaking a cube at every release. Um, and there was also another issue, which was um, extensibility. So Cube was was um, was extensible, uh, and it's meant to be extensible. But there was no way to actually plug a new runtime at will, uh, and so it was pretty much restricted to Docker and Rocket. So the community uh, gathered together and they came up with this idea of removing the interaction between the kubelet and a given runtime outside of kube itself. Uh, and that was the time when the CRI, or the container runtime interface, uh, has been created. Uh, the CRI interface is a plug and play API, and it means that as long as your container runtime implements the server side of the CRI, Everything is going to work just fine. Kubelet is going to be able uh, to create pods, containers, uh, and do all the work it needs to do. It's a gRPC API, uh, and it's available from Kube 1.5 as an alpha features. Nowadays, it's the default, and even uh, the Docker runtime uh, is running through the CRI itself. Uh, it's a client-server architecture, and again, the container runtime implements the server side of this API, and the kubelet implements the client side. Uh, the CRI itself consists of two main pieces. Uh, one is the runtime service, uh, which is the one in charge of the pods and the container life cycles, uh, which includes actions like uh, running a pod, stopping it, create a container in a given pod, uh, getting the list of all running containers uh, in Kubernetes, uh, as well as uh, being in charge of the interaction between the containers for things like uh, grabbing the logs for a container, executing into a, a running container, uh, attaching and attaching. So the runtime service is the first piece, uh, and it's uh, in charge of all of this. And then there is the image service, which, as you can imagine, is in charge of the image lifecycle. And again, it includes actions like pulling an image, getting the status of an image, to gather information like uh, the image file size. Um, and it's also responsible for reporting file system information to the kubelet for stuff like uh, the image garbage collection, like. Uh, the kubelet can request the runtime, how much space there is left, so that you can actually evict uh, 
some pods if, if there is uh, disk pressure. Uh, this is a, a nice overview of the CRI in action. You can see on the left side, we have uh, the Hublet, which is implementing just the gRPC client. And it talks to, uh, in this case, there is a CRI shim. This is the default when running with the Docker runtime. Uh, the CRI shim is a daemon implementing the gRPC server. And then uh, on the right side, we do have the container runtime and all the containers. Uh, so at that point, uh, we, we've been working with the Kubernetes community and maintainers, uh, and we thought that uh, the status of the container runtime within Kube wasn't uh, that stable at the time. So we came up with this idea of implementing a new container runtime, which was meant just for Kube, and which was specifically uh, an open governance uh, project. And nowadays, uh, Cryo, it's, it's under the Kubernetes SIGs organization. So we, we adhere to the Kube rules. And again, that, that's uh, open governance for us. Uh, Cryo is also, of course, an open source project. We are on GitHub. Uh, it's really uh, tiny as, as far as the code base goes. So it's really lean and it's really stable because it's, it's, uh, it's small. Uh, it's, also more, it's also secure because uh, since it's small, we can also audit the full uh, our source code uh, and fix bugs instantly. And probably the most important thing is that cryo is boring because we don't do anything else than just what Kubernetes needs. In Cryo, we don't have any such features that Kubernetes don't need. For instance, we don't build images. Kubernetes doesn't need to build images. We don't build images. Uh, and that, that's really important because uh, when you have a, a, a huge project like a container runtime, if you implement features that can actually mine stability on other parts of the runtime, that's bad. So we didn't want to do anything like that. So Cryo just implements what it needs for Kube, and that's it. And again, that's boring. That's also boring because uh, we choose to use uh, the, the Open Container Initiative specification. Specifically, we are using the runtime specification and the image specification. This makes sure that from release to release, uh, there won't be any breakage in the way we talk to the runtimes. And that's uh, pretty much what Kube wants as well. But Kube just wants for every release to run the containers and it as it was doing in the previous release. So by adhering to such standards, we make sure that hopefully we don't break from, from time to time. And again, Cryo is, is made for Kube and just for Kube. There is no other intended user other than Kubernetes. So there is no cryo PS or cryo uh, logs or whatever. It's just meant for cube. So to actually narrow down the scope, the scope of cryo itself is tied to the CRI. So from release to release, if the CRI needs a new action to be implemented, we'll do that. And only that. We, don't, we won't do anything other than that. Cryo itself is shaped around Kube, and that means that we know what Kube needs as far as the container runtime is. Um, so we, we know that there are certain actions like uh, getting the image status or the container status, which are recurring actions. And so we are able to speed up that code path uh, in Cryo itself uh, to make it faster because Kube needs that. Um, Again, the only supported user is Kube, and we will never add any features that can mine stability and performance. Uh, I'll talk about that in a moment as well, but we make sure that uh, we never break Kube in any way, and we make sure for every release to not regress in performance. Versioning is also tied to upstream Kube. So right now, uh, 1.12 is going out the door, and guess what, Cryo is also going with the Cryo 112, so that it's, it's a no-brainer to understand which version goes which, uh, with the version of Kubernetes supported. Uh, support is also tied to Kube, and that means uh, Cryo is backporting patches 
uh, as long as cube uh, needs it. So right now, the all the supported release is probably 1.7, and we do still support 1.7 for security fixes. This is, again, an eye-level view of the architecture of Cryo with, within Cube. You can see the kubelet on the left side uh, calling through the gRPC API uh, into Cryo, and you can see it's made of the image service and the runtime service I've talked before. For the image service, we're using a library called Containers Image, which is the one in charge of pulling images, uh, listing images on a, on, a, on a given node and stuff like that. And the runtime service is the one which is actually running the containers through the uh, OCI container runtime. We make use of libraries like the OCI Generate, which is a library to create configurations for OCI compatible runtime. So we make sure that we can generate one configuration for every OCI compatible runtime. So you can come up with your own container runtime, and it should just work. Uh, for networking, we're using the CNI. Probably you're already familiar with this if you use Cube. Uh, and at the lowest level, we use a library called Container Storage, which is the one in charge of, for instance, exploding the image into layers. Uh, on a copy and write file system like OverlayFS, and then run your container. Above, you can see those are two examples of two pods running uh, with Cryo. Uh, so there is an infra container because uh, neither Cryo nor Docker, for, for that matter, is a pod concept. So we did the same as Docker did, and we implemented the pod concept as a an infra container holding namespaces and C group, and then we spawn the actual application containers inside uh, the namespaces and C groups for the infra container so that we achieve the pod concept in that way. And for every container running, we also have a little uh, tool called Common, which stands for container monitoring. I will dive into that uh, in a moment. So the the heart of, of, of Cryo and Cube itself, it's running containers. So we do make sure that we can run almost every container out there if it's OCI compatible. Right now, our default is uh, Run C, which is a project and a runtime inside the Open Container Initiative repository. But uh, we also support uh, new runtimes like Kata containers, which was previously known as, as Clear containers. And for every runtime, we also make sure that it won't break cube in any way. And um, for instance, the Kata containers maintainers uh, reports to us for every pull request if something goes wrong, so that we won't merge any features that can actually break the other container runtime. Container storage is the library I've talked to you before, and is the one uh, in charge of managing layers on copy and write file systems. Uh, Cryo, by default, uses OverlayFS, uh, which is pretty stable, um, and it's our default. Um, and container storage is also, you can view it as the, uh, the storage drivers uh, for, for Docker, like device mapper, overlay. Um, then we do have, again, the container image library, um, which is a library, again, for pulling images. Uh, this library is probably where everything started because we extracted it from a tool I'm going to talk about later. Uh, and we embedded it into our downstream Docker as well, so it's really battle tested. Um, you can pull images without uh, any privilege as well. Like today, if you want to, with other tools, if you want to pull an image, you actually need to be root. That wasn't uh, what we wanted, so. As part of developing containers image, we make sure that we can pull images as unprivileged user, as it should be. Uh, and containers image is also, for us, has been the playground uh, for, for adding and experimenting with new features. Uh, Cryo itself today can run with um, what we call simple signing, which is uh, signature verification for containers image. So you can enable that in Cryo if you want it. Uh, and that has been possible because we, we, we actually 
uh, implemented all of this in containers image, and we are using it in cryo. The other library that we use, it's a library extracted from a tool, which is the OCI runtime tool. And uh, as I've told you before, it's just a library that generates OCI compatible configuration so that every runtime uh, can read it uh, and create containers in pretty much the same way as, as other OCI compatible runtime. The CNI uh, is the container network interface, uh, and you can come up with your own network stop if you want, as long as it implements the, this interface. Cryo is able to run with most of the plugins out there supported in Cube, like Flannel, Wave, you name them, uh, and also the OpenShift SDN. Uh, and then we do have this little binary, which is called Common, uh, which is the container monitor for every container. And as the word suggests, it's in charge of monitoring the whole life cycle of a container. Uh, it's basically in charge of starting the container itself. So when a request from the kubelet comes, we do spawn a, cry, a common process that in turn spawn a run C for, for our default runtime, a run C process uh, and take care of it for the whole life cycle of, of the container itself. It's responsible for logging, uh, for handling the TTUI for the container, serving a touch client, detecting and reporting uh, out of memory condition. And probably most importantly, it's also, Conman is the parent process for the container itself. That means that Cryo can go down entirely, but your containers will still keep running and serving requests. That hasn't been the case uh, before with other runtime as well, whether if you, updated at the runtime in question or cryo, uh, it will go, it will bring down all your containers. So since we do have this little binary in between cryo and the container itself, we are able to um, upgrade cryo without any downtime for, for the containers running. This is uh, a zoom on, on the pod architecture. We're running with run C. You can see this all box is the pod itself, uh, which shares the IPC net and PID spaces and C group. Uh, and these are the application containers that joins uh, the namespaces of the infrastructure containers holding the, the namespaces. And for each container, we do have a uh, common process. This is the architecture, which is uh, a bit different with core containers and Kata containers. Since this is a virtual machine, uh, the Kata containers developer implemented a shim uh, in between the common process and, and the, the application containers and the pod itself. So this is uh, it's pretty different than this one. Uh, but yeah, this is how it is in Kata containers. And now, I hope everything is going to go well. I'll show you how transparent was to actually implement, uh, well, use Cryo with, with Cube, since you, you'll have the same experience as with other container runtime you're already used to. So I do have a OneNode Cube cluster running on my laptop and draining all my battery power. Uh, you can see here we have the node. It's a 1.11 um, node, so it's the lightest. Uh, I do have the cube DNS, which is in charge of the networking for, for the whole cluster, and the dashboard running. And we're going to run an HTTP container with the image HTTP Alpine, and we should be seeing it running. You can see it's running. Uh, I'll show you in a moment that we're actually running with cryo and nothing else. Uh, I don't know. I'm using this terminal for the first time because I thought it was better. Can you read it? Not at all? I don't really know.
Are you able to see it now? I'm gonna run this piano. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna run this again. Uh, we have the nodes, all the pods running. We can see that the HTTPD pod is running. Uh, and I'm starting a new one here. I do have two now. So the last one, you can see it, it has been started successfully. We can test it uh, by curling uh, the IP address for that pod. We can see it's working. Uh, we can curl a uh, not found page for the sake of grabbing the logs and see that it's working over there. You can see the slash as sgconf2018. Uh, we can also kubectl exec as you would normally do with other container runtime, and you can see HTTPD is running. Uh, you can also run interactively, and it's working. And now just check that we're running with cry itself. You can see that the output of kubectl describe uh, is showing that we're running with the cryo slash slash, which means that we're running indeed with cryo, and there is no Docker running at all. Rather, all our containers for every pod that you've seen in the output of kubectl get pods is actually running uh, through run C. And this is our container, the HTTPD container running. We can check that that is the one by looking at the PSOX output. You can see it's still HTTPD. And for each container we're running, if uh, we are also running a system D scope for it, so for the sake of blogging and monitoring it. So if you prepend cryo dash to the container ready the scope, you can actually you can see that it's uh, it's integrated with system D itself. Uh, so we can see the all the processes running for it, uh, the logs uh, streaming to to the system D uh, scope as well. And we do also run a scope for common as well. You can see it here. Uh, as you would normally do with other container runtime, of course, uh, everything is going to work normally. So here's the dashboard, which is working just fine. You can see we do have the two pods running. And since we do care about performance uh, in Cry itself, We've implemented uh, Prometheus. I know this is really small. We've implemented Prometheus um, uh, metrics so that if something goes wrong of, of, or if something isn't looking uh, that good, uh, someone can go here and just try to understand what's going on. So back here. So the status as of today is that the CRI interface is implemented at any time, uh, and that means for every release we make sure uh, all the CRI is implemented. So if any new actions are is required by the CRI itself, we implement it before releasing it. We do have maintainers from and contributors, uh, more than 90 maintainers, the, more than 90 contributors from many uh, companies like Red Hat, Intel, IBM, you name it. Uh, you can run cryo with cube with cube ADM or Minikube. Uh, there's support for mixed workloads. Nowadays, these are called runtime classes in one in Kubernetes 1.12. That means that you can have certain pods running with run C, which is a runtime just uh, not virtualized. Whether you can have other pods that can run with uh, runtimes like Kata containers, so that you have virtual machine for for a pod. Uh, Cry itself is deployed to the to our OpenShift Online cluster, so we do have a pretty good uh, user base that it's testing on it. Um, and the package for Cry is available in Fedora, Ubuntu, or RHEL, and it's really easy to get started. We do make sure that we don't, uh, as, it, as I told you before, we make sure that we don't actually break uh, Cube at any time. We do run. Uh, more than 1,000 uh, end-to-end tests at, for every pull request, uh, and that that allow us not to break Kubernetes in any way. 
Uh, we do also run the OpenShift test, uh, not as part of every pull request, but we do run them, which is a superset of the cube end-to-end -end test. Uh, we do run a conformance testing, which is the CRI test. We do have our own integration test, and before every release, we also run a performance uh, run to make sure that we, not, we don't regress. If you want to get started with Cryo and Cube, now you can use Minikube with this command line. Uh, I'll upload the slide so that everyone uh, can actually take this. Uh, or if you're running from a local setup, you can uh, pass some environment variables to local app clusters and get going, as I'm doing here on my laptop. To debug what's going on uh, with, with Cryo, and especially with the whole CRI interface, uh, the community, the upstream community in Cube, came out with a new tool called CRI CTL. Um, which is a small binary uh, that just talks to the CRI endpoint of any container runtime, so that uh, in case something goes wrong uh, on a node, you usually SSH into it and Docker PS, uh, Docker images, Docker exec. You can pretty much do the same with CRI CTL. So this is a this is meant as a as a debug tool. And we're going to move this project into the Kubernetes uh, organization itself since it's crucial for, for, for the Kube project. So everything in Cryo has been uh, made possible uh, by some libraries like containers image, container storage. Uh, and over time, even before starting Cryo itself, we created some tools that are working with containers in general so that we created uh, tools like Scopio, which is a tool uh, to run, uh, to, to play with container image. Like you can pull images, as I told you before, by using container image, uh, which is the one Scopio is using. So you can, you can actually pull an image without being root, as it's desirable. Uh, there is no demo running with pulling an image. So it's just straight command, and you'll have the images on your host, or you can sync up images between registries. Another tool that we've built uh, by leveraging those little libraries that we're using in Cryo itself is Builda, which is a, a tool to build container images. And again, we don't have any demo running. Uh, Builda uses a shell-like syntax to build images. So there is still support for Docker files, but um, um, of course, we know that people are still using Docker files, so it's still supported. And then we created a tool called Podman, which is uh, just uh, running containers uh, as, as Docker does. Like today, you can Podman run something. And all of these three tools, uh, maybe except Scopio, are going to be demoed and, uh, by Dan Walsh uh, later today. So make sure to, to come to this session. Uh, so overall, the Kubernetes community came up with this idea of the CRI interface and we leveraged that by creating a probably, a, I'd say the best runtime since it's the only runtime um, made for Kube, specifically for Kube. Any other runtime has other uh, supported user, whether Cry is just for Kube. Uh, and so by also leveraging uh, all the libraries we'd use, we use it into Cryo. We also built many tools for the whole containers ecosystem, uh, building apps for libraries uh, like containers image, storage, uh, all the open containers initiative libraries. So the roadmap, very briefly, is to, well, not the first one, but uh, we aim to, to be the default in Kube upstream, since we, we think that uh, we are specifically for Kube. Uh, we, we will keep pace with upstream Kube, and that means tracking and supporting uh, Kubernetes, uh, all the Kubernetes version out there. Uh, we moved out uh, the Kubernetes incubator organization to something called the Kubernetes 6, which is a, uh, a repository for six specific uh, tools. So Cry is in there now. Uh, it's not the default container runtime for OpenShift, but that's on our roadmap but it's already the default container runtime in OpenSUSE microOS. So if you install and use microOS, uh, right now you get the kubelet and the cryo runtime as default. And of course, we, we are aiming at having more adoption overall. 
if you want to get involved, make sure to, to go to these links and we do have a, a free node channel, uh, Cryo, and we usually hang around in the Signal channel and Cryo channel in the Kubernetes Slack with a, a website if you want to, to see it as well. With that, thank you. Uh, if you want stickers, Vincent has stickers over there. I ran out of time, so I guess I'll take questions out, outside.